On October 30th, 2024, a discussion about abortion took place in the House of Commons. Watch to see the very disappointing statements from the leaders of our main political parties. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of the Liberal Party, Jagmeet Singh of the New Democratic Party, and Pierre Polyev of the Conservatives. It is beyond frustrating to hear continuous misinformation about crisis pregnancy centers, which are already very clear about not committing or referring for abortions. These centers work tirelessly to support vulnerable women with compassion and resources, offering real help when it's needed the most. We deserve politicians who will stand up for life instead of spreading misinformation. Here's what our leaders had to say. Let's talk about women. In Alberta, Daniel Smith, the premier, is privatizing health care and giving it to Covenant. Covenant refuses to give abortions. That is clearly a violation of the Canada Health Act. Does the Prime Minister agree? Yes or no? Here, 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 here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Gover Mr. Speaker, we are the government that has stood up for women's rights unequivocally across this country, including pulling back transfers to provinces right. where uh, uh, abortion services and reproductive health uh, wasn't, wasn't being delivered. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, we're moving forward with more ways to protect women's rights. Just yesterday, we presented a ways and means motion uh, that's going to mean that pregnancy crisis centers will have to disclose whether or not they're actually offering the full suite of reproductive services and rights to women, or uh, whether uh, they are going to leave women without support and without choices at an extremely delicate time. That's right. The, the Honourable Member for Burnaby South. It's her body, her choice, not her body, her body, Conservative Party's choice. Yeah. Yeah. Conservat the Conservatives have revealed a new plan for a cut. This time, they want to cut in the Affordable Housing Accelerator Fund. And now, the Bloc wants to support them. The Bloc had some power, but they weren't able to do anything to resolve the housing crisis in Quebec. People need affordable housing, not infighting. Will the Liberals finally wake up? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to follow up on the first part of the question from my honorable colleague on the fact that the Conservative Party continues to attack women's rights. Now, I certainly have questions about the Conservative MPs from Quebec within the Conservative Party of Canada who have sat on their hands while their colleagues attack women as rights the anti-choice members of the Conservative Party. We are seeing women's rights uh, uh, under attack everywhere, and the Conservative Party is encouraging them with the MPs they've elected. Abortion is health care. One in three people who can get pregnant will need abortion care in their lifetime. But for close to a decade, this Liberal government failed to remove barriers, letting Conservative Premiers cut access to abortion. And this Conservative leader secretly voted five times to take away the right to choose. Yay. Canadians want to see access to reproductive health care protected. Why have the Liberals not enforced the Canada Health Act to protect equal access to health care, including abortion? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, my daughter is in the gallery today, so I want her to hear me as long as everyone else does. This government is unequivocally pro-choice. We will always defend a woman's right to choose. Full stop. That's why, Mr. Speaker, we've actually pulled back funding from provinces that haven't been delivering access uh, to abortion uh, in their jurisdictions, why we will continue to enforce the Canada Health Act. But, Mr. Speaker, it is the Conservative Party, with its dangerous attack on women's rights, that should have people worried right across the country. At a time where we've seen Roe versus Wade overturned, attacks on women's rights, the Conservative leader can't stand up and defend women's rights. I'd like to uh, remind the Right Honourable Prime Minister and all members, please, to not make mention 
uh, to people in the galleries. It is against the rules of, of this place. Order, please. The Honourable Member for St. Laurent. Mr. Speaker, our government has always protected women's right to choose. But the anti-choice lobby of the caucus and the, uh, and the Conservative caucus and the leader are controlling it. And some of these anti-choice organizations, organizations that support the Conservatives, use deceptive tactics to deter women from ac accessing a complete array of reproductive care. Can the Prime Minister tell Canadians about the measures taken by our government to protect women from these centres? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'd like to thank the member for St. Laurent for her diligent work on defending women's rights. We have heard too many women tell us about how uh, they experienced shame, and that's unacceptable. That's why yesterday we, pre we presented a bill to force these centres to be more transparent. Otherwise, they risk losing their status as a charitable organisation. Unlike the Conservative leader, the Liberals will always defend women's right to choose and their right to access uh, the health care they need, including in the entire array of reproductive care services. Thank you. Canadians watching today will see that the leader of the opposition is refusing to stand up and take uh, a strong position in protecting women's rights unequivocally in this House. He can't because his MPs uh, won't let him. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, he's refusing to protect his MPs by not getting the security clearance necessary to get fully informed on threats to our democracy from foreign powers. Why won't he get the security clearance necessary to take international interference seriously? That's right. The right, sorry, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, his tinfoil hat conspiracy theories and misinformation will not distract. We stand up for women's rights every day on this side. It has been our 20-year-long policy in the Conservative Party that there will be no restrictions on women's reproductive choices or on abortion. He knows that. After hearing these statements, it's beyond disappointing, it's really embarrassing, that not one leader in the House of Commons stood to defend life or to advocate for the preborn. Canada remains the only democratic nation with no legal protection for preborn children. This is a tragedy, and it's time for real leadership in the House of Commons. Our politicians need to do better, to stand up for life, and to recognize the value of each and every human being. Let's keep pressing forward for change and for leaders who will courageously stand up for Canadians who have no voice.